A couple years ago, I created my Sim Racing Wheel Buyer's Guide, which appeared to be quite popular with you guys. I wrote up a revision of the guide for 2018, but as of right now, it's been over three years since I've done a full-fledged buyer's guide. Well, I guess now is as good a time as ever. So, this is the 2020 edition of the Sim Racing Wheel Buyer's Guide. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. For my 2020 Wheel Buyer's Guide, I'm planning on making at least three parts. First off, we're going to be covering the wheel side of things, covering a wide variety of options available in the market. After that, I feel like it would be good to have a buyer's guide covering the variety of different cockpits on the market and even wheel stands for the more compact solutions. After that, we can have a software buyer's guide talking about some of the different sim racing titles available. But first things first, we are going to be talking about the wheel side of things. The great thing about sim racing is that it can be quite accessible. You definitely don't need to go overboard and dump over a thousand dollars to get a fun experience out of sim racing. Granted, to really make the most out of the hobby, I'd say you want to make a bit of an investment to try to keep from detracting from the experience. One thing I want to talk about before we get into the different options available is what I see as the main things to look for in a sim racing wheel. I'd say there are three main things to look for in a decent sim racing wheel. First, at least 900 degrees of rotation. In this day and age, we're easily able to have our wheels matching the steering rotation of our virtual cars one to one. Higher degrees of rotation are also great for types of racing such as rally, drifting, and some touring cars. Secondly, you want quick force feedback. You want as little latency as possible between what you're seeing and what you're feeling. So being able to have a faster wheel will get you closer to that one-to-one -one experience. Lastly, the main criteria I judge wheels on is the smoothness of the driving feel. Real world cars have a pretty smooth feel through the wheel while driving. They aren't notchy, they aren't rough, they are just smooth. So yeah, I guess you could say you want a smooth feeling there. Now the last thing before we get into the actual buyer's guide, I want to provide some information about the different kinds of force feedback available. If you know the stuff already and just want to jump to the different wheels, go to the timestamp on the screen. Force feedback has been around for a surprisingly long time, dating back all the way to the Atari TX1 arcade game in 1983. However, the first home force feedback wheel wouldn't be released for roughly 15 years after that in the form of the Microsoft Sidewinder force feedback wheel. That was one of the first force feedback wheels you could actually use at home, and then the wheels became far more popular with the Driving Force series of wheels from Logitech in the early 2000s. There are three primary forms of force feedback that are used in sim racing wheels nowadays, gear drive, belt drive, and direct drive. For the first two forms of force feedback, there is a middleman system in effect to translate and amplify the forces from the motor to the wheel's shaft. The main benefit of these systems is the fact that you can use a smaller motor, but still produce a decent amount of force. Gear-driven force feedback wheels are the oldest tech behind consumer-grade force feedback wheels. It will use gears to create a transmission system to amplify the forces from the motor to the wheel. It's a decent solution for budget racing wheels, but the two main drawbacks are noise and roughness. Gear-driven wheels are easily the noisiest and least precise thanks to the way the cog system works. It's a decent option for basic level wheels, but is easily outclassed by the newer technology that is available. Belt drive wheels are a relatively new tech, with the first consumer grade belt driven wheels being sold around 2009 or so. Fanatic was the first company to release a consumer grade belt drive wheel, but then the technology was widely popularized when the belt driven Thrustmaster T500 RS was selected as the official wheel of Gran Turismo 5 in 2010. There has been somewhat of this belt-driven wheel arms race between Fnatic and Thrustmaster to optimize the technology, which has been pretty great to see. The main benefits of a belt-driven wheel over the gear drive counterparts are smoothness and power. We've been seeing belt drive wheels generating forces two to three times more powerful than the gear driven wheels, while at the same time being smoother and quieter as well. Going up to a direct drive wheel, there are basically no compromises in the force feedback. A direct drive cuts the middleman out of the picture, 
directly mounting a steering wheel onto a large motor, and I mean large. There's one direct drive wheel where the motor weighs over 14 kilograms or 30 pounds. The result of this, the strongest, fastest, and smoothest force feedback you can get or likely even want. In my opinion, the force feedback from a direct drive wheel is simply the best you can get at this point in time. So that is basically my blurb about the different types of force feedback technologies that are currently available. So now let's take a look at what wheels take advantage of this tech. The first category I'm going to be addressing is the sub $100 bracket. And in that category, there isn't exactly much. For the wheels in this price range, all of that explanation I did about force feedback isn't worth squat. If you're looking for a new wheel at the sub $100 price bracket, you won't have any force feedback and you won't have the 900 degrees of rotation as well. Most of the wheels in this price bracket feature a bungee cord style system that basically builds up resistance the more you steer towards that 240 to 270 degree mark, which is generally the maximum degrees of rotation you will get from them. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, there's only one new wheel I would consider recommending at this price point, and that's the Thrustmaster T80. It's a simple bungee cord wheel with 270 degrees of rotation. There's no force feedback, so basically think of the feel of this wheel as similar to the lower quality racing games in an arcade or something like that. The one other benefit of this wheel is that it includes a baseline two pedal set and is compatible with a PlayStation 4. Personally, I would highly recommend that you look into investing a little more to try to pick up something that has force feedback and 900 degrees of rotation. However, if you're really itching at the bit to get your feet wet and you're willing to make some compromises, the T80 is a decent sub $100 wheel, but be aware, you definitely get what you pay for. One other thing I would recommend in the sub $100 category is to browse used marketplaces. You can sometimes be shocked at the deals you can find from Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace from someone looking to offload their stuff or someone looking to upgrade. As long as the wheel is in decent condition, the used marketplace can serve as an option to get a decent wheel for a reasonable price. Also, one thing I found on the used marketplace are wheel and cockpit combos, which could also be had at a steep discount. The next price bracket is an interesting one, the $150 to $300 price bracket. One of the things that makes it interesting is that the wheels in this bracket will wildly fluctuate in price. This is the area though that I would call the sweet spot for getting into sim racing while still getting a full idea of what it is capable of. This is where you will start seeing wheels with the aforementioned 900 degrees of rotation and force feedback systems. However, in this price bracket, it's basically exclusively geared force feedback. My personal recommendation in this category will be the Logitech G29 or G920. Logitech has been making gear-based force feedback wheels since the late 1990s and has developed a reputation for creating incredibly reliable wheels. The latest generation Logitech G wheels are the follow-up to the Logitech G27, which is still an incredible sim racing wheel with many racers using it to this day. The G29 and G920 both feature an 11-inch steering wheel wrapped in leather. Unlike the Logitech G27, the new wheels feature all of the buttons on the steering wheel rim, as well as a rotary dial and shift lights on the Logitech G29, but is strangely not on the G920. The Logitech G wheels are the first wheels on this list to feature a three pedal set as standard, adding a clutch into the mix. The pedal set is also incredibly versatile, allowing for modifications and even the ability to be individually mounted if you are quite handy. Unfortunately, this wheel no longer includes a shifter as it did with the G25 and G27. Now, it's an accessory sold separately for $60. However, I have actually seen sales where you can buy the wheel bundled with the shifter for $200. And that's a pretty great deal considering the original price tag for the wheel by itself was $400. Now, you'll just about never see the wheel for that $400 price tag with the wheel without the shifter generally floating around the $220 mark. For that price, it is definitely a great entry level wheel. These are also the first Logitech G series wheels to feature full console compatibility, but it is admittedly with a catch. You need to pick out which console you'd want the compatibility with, 
as each model is compatible with either one or the other, not both. Ultimately, the Logitech G29 is the more full-featured version available, including that rotary dial and an array of LEDs to represent shift lights. So if you're looking at a PS3 or PS4 wheel, or just one for the PC, I would recommend the G29 over the G920. If you're looking for something different though, then we're going back with a Thrustmaster recommendation. Thrustmaster's wheel to compete with Logitech is the TMX and T150. These wheels from Thrustmaster offer a gear and belt pulley system that makes things slightly smoother and quieter than a fully geared system. Like the Logitech G wheels, the TMX features an 11 inch steering wheel with 900 degrees of rotation. But the T150 actually takes the wheel and bumps it up to 1080 degrees of rotation. The TMX and T150 generally retail for a little less than the comparable Logitech wheels, but the main drawback is that the base model of these come with the same two pedal set that is included with the T80. They're functional, but simply do not compare to what Logitech offers. However, there are pro models of the wheels available that replaces that pedal set with the Thrustmaster T3PAs, which is the far better solution. Even with the three pedal set, the TMX and T150 still sometimes find themselves undercutting the Logitech wheels. You miss out on the more versatile pedal set, the advanced functionality, and the leather steering wheel, but this could be seen as a better value in some cases. The 300 to 500 point is the point where we abandon the gear driven force feedback wheels and move up to the belt drive systems. This is also where we will start seeing more variety and options available. Also a big draw from this price bracket is we are going to start seeing modular wheels that feature interchangeable rims so that can add more variety to your experience. For the price point we are going to be seeing a few wheels from Thrustmaster as well as Fnatic entering the mix. Thrustmaster again has two models of wheel paired together, the TX which is Xbox One compatible and a T300RS which is compatible with the PlayStation 3 and PS4. This is Thrustmaster's base model belt drive wheel and it works fairly well. Again, the Xbox compatible wheel caps out at 900 degrees of rotation while the PlayStation model can go up to 1080. Both the TX and T300 in their base configuration featured the same relatively crappy two pedal set that has been included in the lower end models. But also again, there are higher tier variants that include the higher T3PA pedal set and a higher end rim. The T300RS and TX are definitely a solid step above their gear driven counterparts featuring stronger, smoother and quicker force feedback. You can notice a tangible upgrade in the belt drive system and it's a remarkable improvement. However, a solid combo featuring the three pedal set can be roughly twice the price of Thrustmaster's lower tier offerings. Is that worth the price? Well, if you're looking for a better feeling and stronger wheel, then I would easily recommend it. One other thing worth mentioning though, is that you can buy just the wheel base for around 220 to $250 if you wanted to buy each piece a la carte. However, I still believe the full package is, to be honest, a better value. Again, as mentioned earlier, Fnatic enters the ring at this bracket with their CSL Elite series of wheels. The CSL Elite is a belt-driven system, but is also very modular. They offer a variety of options to fit what you're looking for. There are two versions of the CSL Elite, but I personally would recommend that you take a look at the CSL Elite PS4 model, which retails for $399 for just the base or $499 with a wheel rim. The reason? This is the only wheel currently on the market that is not only PlayStation 4 compatible, but is also compatible with the Xbox One if you get an Xbox One compatible rim. Now, I don't know if that compatibility will carry over to next gen hardware for sure, but if it does transfer over, this would be a great option to future proof. Fnatic CSL Elite offers a variety of features such as shift lights on the base, as well as a quick adjustment system that can be used to make wheel and force feedback adjustments on the fly. With the base CSL Elite rim, there is an LED display on the top of the rim, and it's nice to have. The 11 inch rim isn't the best in terms of build quality compared to other Fnatic rims, but it does have a nice premium feel with a mix of leather and suede wrapped around it. Personally, my recommendation for this price bracket would be the Fnatic CSL Elite if you're looking for the high-end performance and added functionality. 
From a technical and feature standpoint, Fnatic has Thrustmaster easily beat. However, it does come at a cost. The 499 price for the CSL Elite with a rim does not include a pedal set. And for the CSL Elite pedals, you're looking at either $100 or $200, depending on if you're wanting a two pedal or three pedal set. That would bring us to around $600 to $700, which is still a good price, but can be quite steep, considering the T300 RS or TX would give you a comparable, albeit lighter experience for half the price. With that being said, let's jump on to the next category, and that's the $500 to $1,000 price bracket. This is a very interesting bracket, as it's starting to get into the higher-end prosumer market, with some direct drive wheels entering this category. A couple years ago, when I created the 2018 edition of this guide, there were no direct drive wheels in this category. But now we're seeing the prices dropping below $1,000 for these, and it's really quite remarkable. To start off though, we're going to be talking about the high-end belt-driven wheels currently available. First off, Thrustmaster has not one, not two, but three models in this price bracket. Two of these wheels are in the TS series, the TSPC and the TSXW Racer. These are a step above what we saw from the T300 RS and TX, featuring a 40 watt brushless force feedback motor. The TSPC Racer is the only wheel from Thrustmaster that is only compatible with a PC, and is a model that is sold with an open wheel style rim and without a pedal set, albeit for a reduced price. There is a TSPC Racer model that was recently released with a Ferrari 4A8 Challenge rim for $649, but it still does not include a pedal set. The TSXW Racer includes a Sparco P310 replica rim, is compatible with the PSC and Xbox One, and also includes a T3PA pedal set for a retail price of $649. Personally, I would recommend the TSXW over the TSPC as it features a more versatile rim, a pedal set, and Xbox One compatibility to boot. No, those were just two models and there isn't a TS wheel for the PlayStation. Why is that? Thrustmaster decided to save its most advanced wheel for the officially licensed Gran Turismo Sport wheel. The Thrustmaster TGT is easily the most advanced wheel Thrustmaster has made to date, including some very welcome features. The TGT features a relatively smallish steering wheel for such a high-end unit, clocking in at only 11 inches. However, it is just packed full of functionality. In that small form factor, Thrustmaster was able to pack in four rotary encoders, all of the PlayStation buttons you would need, and even two analog joysticks on it. I would have loved to see the rim bumped up to a slightly larger size, but it's nice to see all of these features. Also, one great feature of this wheelbase is the tactile transducer mounted to the back of the wheelbase. This transducer allows for an extra dimension of depth to the feeling of the sim, which is quite nice. There is one big downside though. It is only compatible with one title, Gran Turismo Sport on the PS4. If this transducer was compatible with multiple titles, that would have been incredible, but since it's only limited to one game, it comes off feeling as a bit of a gimmick. Even without the transducer though, the TGT is still Thrustmaster's best wheel to date. It has the strongest, most precise force feedback, and it is quite quick. The thing is, the original suggested retail price for this wheel was $800. That was simply way too much. Nowadays, you can get this set for a little under $600, or even cheaper on sale, which puts it at roughly the same price bracket as the TS series wheels. For that price, this is definitely a solid option. So that wraps up the offerings from Thrustmaster in the sim racing world, and now we'll go to the final belt-driven wheel in this guide, the Fnatic Club Sport Wheel version 2.5. Fnatic's Club Sport wheel is easily my recommended choice for anyone wanting a top of the line wheel but is not ready to go direct drive just yet. The Club Sport wheel version 2.5 is the quickest, smoothest, and most powerful belt driven wheel I have used. It offers a wide variety of features and modularity with Fnatic's deep ecosystem. It includes the same quick settings I mentioned that the CSL Elite has but offers some added functionality as well. 
there's only one thing I wish the Club Sport wheel had, and that was PS4 compatibility. That's the only thing that this really misses out on. However, I will mention that the price can add up a bit. This wheelbase retails for $549, and that's without a rim, that is without a pedal set. I'd say that once you factor in a pedal set and a rim, you are going to be looking at about $800 to $1,000, which can be pretty steep, that is at the top of our price bracket. So yeah, just keep that in mind. In all other senses, this is basically my favorite non-direct drive wheel. Now that we've gotten the belt drive wheels out of the way, it's time for the big guns, the direct drive wheels. Again, I just want to reiterate how awesome it is to see these wheels breaking under the sub $1,000 barrier. A couple years ago, you could not get a direct drive wheel for under $1,000. Now, you actually have choices. Now, bear in mind that direct drive wheels do require more effort and finagling to work. You would definitely need to buy a separate pedal set and even a special wheel rim solution to work with it. These are not nearly as turnkey as any of the other wheels we listed so far, so keep that in mind. One of the recent options that has recently emerged on the market is the Symagic M10. This is a direct drive wheel from China with a 10 newton meter servo stepper motor. This is being marketed as an entry level direct drive wheel and it's admittedly priced attractively at $700 for the base. However, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not sure if I would actually recommend this to you guys. Yes, it's a direct drive wheel for a low price, but it seems to be pretty rough around the edges and I believe there are better units by more established brands for a comparable price. Now, to be fair, I have not driven a Symagic M10 myself, so that's something worth mentioning. But based on the opinions and experiences of some of my friends, if you're wanting to go direct drive, spend a little more, you get what you pay for. One of the first direct drive wheels I would say I would actually recommend for the price is the Sim Experience AccuForce V2. This was a wheel that was in my over $1,000 price bracket in my last revision of this guide, and it's a welcome change to see it now in the sub $1,000 category. The AccuForce V2 features a 13 newton meter servo stepper hybrid motor similar to the Symagic M10. So it's not as smooth as higher tier direct drive wheels that utilize a brushless servo motor. However, this is still a great direct drive wheel and actually comes in a few different flavors. The Pro model comes with a 330 millimeter steering wheel with 12 buttons and paddle shifters for $999. If you want to use your own rim with the wheel, then you can pick up the AccuForce Your Way, which allows you to mount a steering wheel or button box that has a 50mm or 70mm pattern on it. This model retails for $699. If you just want the bare minimum components, the DIY option retails for $599. Now, this is definitely a bit above the Symagic in terms of price but I'd feel a lot more comfortable going with Sim Experience, which is a fairly well-trusted brand. And then we have yet more direct drive wheels to break under $1,000. Simplicity has two model series of wheels that are being sold under $1,000. Simplicity has their compact series of wheels, which are lower powered units meant to be for an entry level solution. Now, I have previously tested out their 7 newton meter direct drive wheel, which I guess is now discontinued, and it was okay, but it had quite a few concerning traits, including the fact that it got uncomfortably hot. Because of that, I'm not sure if I would recommend the 8 newton meter model, but I may say you could consider its bigger brother. However, I would be definitely more active in recommending the Simplicity Sim wheels. These are direct drive wheels that use the more common Midge 130 series motors, which were definitely popular in use for open sim wheels. However, the main difference for those versus an open sim wheel is that Simplicity decided to move over to their in-home design software. That is honestly one of my main qualms with it though. When I last tested their software, the force feedback was good, but just not at the level of fidelity I've come to expect from SimiCube, Sim Commander, or Sim Steering. Now, granted, that was an early software and I'll have to test it again at a later date, but it was just okay. So out of those three direct drive wheels on the market under $1,000, my personal recommendation would go towards the AccuForce. 
It's simply the most established wheel with multiple years behind it to refine the hardware and software. It's also the most complete solution with an option to include a wheel, rim, and button box all for $999. Now, it's worth mentioning that I didn't include the Feel VR in this list. Well, that's simply because it hasn't been released. We keep on seeing delays and postponements, so it's something that I'm not going to talk about in this guide until it's actually released. For the last category, we're going from the 1000 price point to, well, the top. We've seen some interesting models in the past couple years that create a decent amount of variety in this bracket, and it's interesting to see. First off, we have the top tier models from Fnatic, the Podium Series wheel. Fnatic's first direct drive wheels are an interesting beast, especially due to the fact that they're the only direct drive wheels on the market that are compatible with consoles. The Fnatic DD1 is a wheel rated up to 20 newton meters of torque, and the DD2 is rated for up to 25 newton meters. The Podium Series is also an all-in-one solution where you don't have to have a separate control box that is separate from the wheelbase. It's also compatible with all Fnatic wheel rims and accessories, giving you a wide pool of products in an admittedly deep ecosystem. I've had very limited time to test out the Fnatic DD2, but in terms of the force feedback, I was pretty impressed. It's not the best direct drive force feedback I've experienced, but it's definitely up there. Hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to do a more in-depth review, but until then, I can say from my experience, it's at least a decent direct drive wheel. Starting at $1,200 for the DD1, there are plenty of benefits to the wheel that can make it one worth considering. Another recent contender in the direct drive world is the SimiCube 2. SimiCube was originally an open-ended system for the open sim wheel movement. The idea was that you would buy an industrial servo motor, get the electronics box to connect the motor to your PC, and basically run it as a high-end steering wheel. SimiCube quickly became the widely adopted platform for most open sim wheel users, but then Granite Devices decided they would design and make their own in-home designed wheel. And they didn't do just that. They made three wheels. The SimiCube 2 Sport offers up to 17 Newton meters of torque. The Pro pumps it up to 25 Newton meters and the Ultimate cranks it all the way up to 32 Newton meters. The SimiCube 2 also offers compatibility with the SimiCube wireless protocol, which allows you to connect a compatible wheel or button box to the wheel base through a 2.4 GHz system. The SimiCube force feedback has had years of being refined and it definitely shows. It works well with most modern sim racing titles and can even scale back well to some retro ones as well. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. The last direct drive wheel I'll showcase in this buyer's guide is the granddaddy of them all, and that's the Sim Steering 2 by Leo Bonnar. The Sim Steering 2 is one of the most established direct drive wheels and is still highly regarded by many sim racing professionals. The Sim Steering 2, just like the SimiCube 2, is available in three different configurations, each with varying strength. The Sim Steering 2, though, is very expensive starting at roughly $2,800, and that's without a quick release or a wheel rim. I've had about maybe 15 to 20 hours behind the wheel of a Sim Steering 2 unit, and I will say it is definitely one of the best wheels I have ever driven with. However, I would say it is not enough to justify spending nearly twice the price of its nearest comparable products. So, despite the Sim Steering 2 being top of the line, I just don't feel like I can actually recommend it compared to the other wheels it's competing with. So as a refresher, I wanted to go through my picks for the top choices for the sim racing wheels throughout the different price points. For the sub $100 bracket, again, there's only one real choice for a new wheel, the Thrustmaster T80. Again, I would say that you're better off saving a little more money and going for a slightly better wheel in my opinion. In the $150 to $300 bracket, I'm going to go with the Logitech G29. Now to be clear, I would not buy a Logitech G29 if it was at its $400 suggested retail price. However, for the $250 or so that it tends to hover around, it's a great entry to mid-level wheel with a few extra features as well. 
If you can get on sale for $199 like it's been at before, it is an incredible deal. The $300 to $500 bracket is quite competitive, but I'm going to go with the Fnatic CSL Elite PS4. This wheel is the only one on the market that features compatibility for both Xbox and PlayStation, granted you have the right components. However, it is worth mentioning that you need to get a separate pedal set and that will bump things above the $500 price point. If you want a full turnkey solution for under $500, I'd say the Thrustmaster T300 RS or TX GT with the T3PA option would be a great choice. For the $500 to $1,000 belt drive category, my recommendation is for the Fnatic Club Sport Wheel version 2.5. It is easily my favorite non-direct drive wheel in the market, both in terms of functionality and in features. For the $500 to $1,000 direct drive section, I'm going to go with the Sim Experience AccuForce V2. It is simply the best complete option for a direct drive wheel under $1,000. It has the most refined software compared to the other offerings, and if you go with the Actiforce Pro, you get a wheel and button box for under $1,000. For the top bracket, I'm going to go with the SimiQ2 Pro. While the Fnatic Podium Series is the more versatile platform, in terms of raw performance to price, I just feel like the SimiQ2 is the best value. However, if you're looking for console compatibility or a wide ecosystem, then the Fnatic Podium Wheel is definitely not a bad option. Alrighty, that just about wraps up my Sim Racing Wheel Buyer's Guide for 2020. I am hoping this guide was of help to you, and if it was, let me know in the comments. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and thanks for watching.